overflows. Awareness, the key to living in balance. Awareness gives you a divine vision or divine eye. The eye of harmony, eye of oneness, harmony, ha eye of all-inclusiveness. It gives you a vision that we are part of one cosmic existence. We are not aliens nor as strangers join. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. The energy that flows in you is also flows in the other as well. And awareness gives you that vision that I call the divine vision and the eye that you develop through awareness is the divine eye. Everyone has experienced moments of awakening when time seems to stop and you are suddenly aware of every moment, every sound, every thought. Awareness is the key of being self-directed, centered and free in every aspect of our lives. Start from the center. One thing to be understood is that silence is not part of the mind. So whenever we say someone has a silent mind, it is erroneous. A mind can never be silent. The very nature of the mind is noise. Mind is anti-silence. Mind is sound, not silence. And when we say he has a silent mind, this is wrong. If he is really silent, then we must say he has no mind or he has attained to no mind. A silent mind is contradiction in terms. It is illogical. It is like saying that there is silent noise. If mind is there, it can never be silent. And if it is silent, then it is no more. Mind is no more. That is why Zen monks use the term no mind. They never say silent mind. No mind is silence and the moment there is no mind, you can feel your body because mind is the passage through which body is felt. If there is no mind, you can feel, you cannot feel that you are a body. The body disappears from consciousness. So in prayer, there is neither the mind nor body. When I say prayer, I mean prayerfulness. The state of being prayerful, there is only pure existence. And that pure existence is indicated by silence, the Hindi word for silence is Maun. Maun is the Hindi word for silence. To attain to this silence or serenity is being prayerful. Prayerful means whatsoever is happening around you or you are doing you are in harmony with it. How to attain to this prayerfulness, to this silence, how to be in prayer, in absolute silence? Whatsoever you do will be useful. That is the greatest. Whatsoever you will do 
will be useless. That is the greatest problem for a religious seeker. This is the greatest problem because whatsoever he can do will lead nowhere. Remember, doing is not relevant. You can sit in a particular posture. That is your doing. You must have seen Buddha in a lotus posture. You can sit in that posture. But for you, that will be doing for you. For Buddha, it was natural and spontaneous. For Buddha, this posture happened on its own. Sometimes in while you are doing what something is happening, all of a sudden you attain to a position of the body or a state of the mind that is not your doing. For Buddha, this posture happened on its own. It was not the cause of his silence. Instead, it was the byproduct of his inner silence. When inner silence is attained, like when the flower, its petals open, the beauty and the fragrance is the byproduct of the opening of the inner petals. When your petals within begins to open as a byproduct, many things happen for which you can continue ere long. You no know effort will be enough. It was not the cause of his silence, instead it was a byproduct of inner silence. When mind is not, when being is totally silent, the body flows, body follows like a shadow. There is a Urdu couplet, Jab dil ko neend a jati hai, when heart is asleep, Jab dil ko neend a jati hai, phir mai hi akela hota hun, then I am all alone. Or yaar ki mehfil hoti hai, and there is the company of our beloved. When heart is asleep, mind is no more. And that time, you and existence are one. When mind is not, when the being is totally silent, body follows like a shadow. It takes a particular posture, the most relaxed one, most relaxed possible, the most passive possible. But you cannot do otherwise. You cannot take a posture first and then let the silence follow. This posture, the body's relaxation and passivity of the mind is the byproduct of inner silence, inner flouting. You cannot take a posture first and then let the silence follow. Because we see a Buddha sitting in a particular posture, we think if this posture is followed, then the inner silence will happen. This is a wrong sequence. For Buddha, the inner phenomena happened first and then this posture followed. Look at it through your own experience. When you get angry, the body takes a particular posture, a particular gesture. Your eyes become blood red and your facial expression also changes. Anger is inside and the body follows, not only outwardly, 
inwardly two changes take place. When anger grips you, your whole chemistry of the body changes. The blood runs fast. You breathe in a different manner and you are ready to fight or take a flight. But anger happens first and then body follows. Start from the pole. Make your eyes red. Create fast breathing and do whatsoever you feel is done by the body in the moment when anger grips you. You can act, but you cannot create anger inside. The actor is doing the same every moment. When he is acting the role of love, he is doing whatsoever is done by the body. When love happens inside, when love happens inside, when but there is no love, the actor may be doing better than you, but love will not follow, it will not overflow. He is more apparently angry than you in real anger, but it is just false. Nothing is happening within. Whenever you start from without, you will create a false state. The real always happens first at the center and then waves reach to the shore, the periphery. That is why the Sutra says, Prayer is silence. Prayer is not words. The innermost center of is prayerful. The innermost center is prayer. Being at that center is a state of prayer. So start from there. When you start from the center, things begin to happen outwardly. This is what meditation is all about. This is what is the process of transformation enough for now?